Hey, what's up guys? Yes, I am sitting on my bed right now. So before I start this video, I just want to give a quick shout out to the network my channel is partnered with here on YouTube called Full Screen. Now before you click away, if you have a YouTube channel with quality content and you'd like to make some money from your hard work, Full Screen can help. But one thing you won't get anywhere else is the ability to make extra money through something Full Screen called the Gorilla Program. Gorilla is a series of sponsored ad campaigns that appear in your full screen dashboard that you can participate in on a weekly basis. Simply choose a campaign, make a short shout out at the start of your video, like this, and when you upload, make sure to tell full screen about it. It's as simple as that. Interested yet? Click the link in the description below to join the full screen network and sign up for the Gorilla program. You won't be disappointed. Hey what's up this is Dan here with a video on Minecraft plugins, finally! Sorry I've taken so long to make this video, I know you guys have been asking for it for a while now, uh, I've just been trying to figure out the best way of explaining how to install plugins in general because there's so many different methods. In this video I want to talk about Minecraft single player plugins because they can be the hardest to install. And one last thing, I will not be talking about bucket plugins today because they're pretty simple really, but if you guys want me to do another video on those, make sure to leave a comment below. So first off, I'm gonna explain how to install plugins or mods in single player Minecraft, firstly in Windows and then in Mac OS X because there are separate methods. So I'm running Windows right now and before we install anything, you will need to have run your Minecraft client at least once in order to download the game files. So I'm sure you guys have done that already, but if you haven't, you can download the client from minecraft.net slash download, that link is below, and download the .exe for Windows or the .zip for Mac which you have to download and double click to unzip before you can run the app. So the two example plugins or mods I'm gonna talk about today are Optifine and single player commands. Both very popular plugins. Optifine basically increases the performance of Minecraft. Single player commands adds practically any functionality you would ever need in the form of chat window commands. Now both of these, only because they're so popular, uh, now include automatic installers you can use that bypass the complication of having to install manually, but unfortunately most mods you will need to install the old fashioned way. Now here on Windows, the general way to install mods is into the minecraft.jar file. Uh, this is the main file used by the game, and that's where we're going to put our modifications. The easiest way to get to this file is by running the client, clicking options, and then clicking the game location on disk link. This should open up the folder where all Minecraft's resources are stored. Simply head into the bin folder, and here we can see the Minecraft file. It may say minecraft.jar if you have extensions turned on. So minecraft.jar is essentially a folder full of smaller files, but to get into that folder and edit it, we need some extra software. The best archive utility I found to open up jar files is 7-zip. It's free and you can download it from this site, 7-zip.org. Download the version you need, either for a 32-bit or 64-bit OS. If you're not sure which one, there's a tutorial link in the description too. Once it's downloaded, run through the 7-zip installer, and we're now ready to go. So open up your Minecraft source folder again, right-click on the minecraft.jar file, and there should now be a 7-zip menu. In there, click Open Archive. There's a lot of files in here, but most of them we won't need to bother with. We're just going to drag and drop our mods into here. So first we have Optifine, I'm going to download the standard version, but of course there are other more advanced versions too. When it downloads you'll get a zip folder, right click it, go into 7-zip again, and click open archive. You should now have two 7-zip windows side by side. Before you copy the files, just make sure to make a backup of the minecraft.jar, uh, just copy and paste it within the minecraft folder so we have a backup. Switch back to 7-zip again, and hit Control a within the Optifine folder to select all the files. And as with most mods, just drag and drop the files into the Minecraft jar, replacing the old files. Now one important thing to note is that not all, but most mods require you to delete this meta-inf folder for the mod to work. This is just a verification folder that Mojang uses, it's perfectly safe to delete, but if the mod you want to install needs this deleted, you must delete it, otherwise the mod won't work. But again, just make sure to check the installation instructions for the particular mod you're installing. So for Optifine, that's all we have to do. Close down the 7-zip windows and open up Minecraft again. Log in, and assuming you've done everything right, you should be able to get to the main menu with your new mod installed. Now to install Optifine as an example on Mac OS X, the process is a little different. It's just a bit trickier to get access to the minecraft.jar file, but apart from that, it's pretty much the same. So having installed and ran the client at least once, open Minecraft again, click Options, and take note of the game location on disk. Now I found that unlike Windows, if I click this, nothing happens, so you'll need to get to this folder manually. Open a new Finder window, go up to Go, 
and click go to folder. In here, type in that same path from the client and hit go. This is the same folder you'll find in Windows. Open up the bin folder and instead of opening the minecraft.jar with something like 7-zip, we're going to turn it into a zip folder first. But before we do this, make sure to create a backup of the jar file by copy and pasting. Single click the minecraft.jar file name, highlight jar at the end with your mouse, and type ZIP. Hit enter and OS 10 will ask you if you want to change the extension. Click use zip. Double click the minecraft.zip file and you'll get a minecraft folder. You can now delete the zip file. So in here is where we'll drag and drop all our mod files into, just like in Windows. I'll download the version of Optifine I need, double click to unzip and I'll get a new folder. Open this up and side by side with the new Minecraft folder, press Command A in the Optifine window to select all files. Then just drag and drop them into the Minecraft folder. Tick the apply to all box and hit replace. Now unfortunately we need to convert this folder back into a jar file again because that's what Minecraft looks for when it starts up. So press back to go to your bin folder. Single click on the folder's file name and type .jar at the end. Click add in the window that comes up and you're now ready to launch Minecraft. You should be able to open this folder normally from now on to add stuff to it, obviously while Minecraft is closed, but if there is a new version of Minecraft released, you will need to do this all over again and reinstall all your mods. As you can see, Minecraft opens just fine, Optifine is installed. So as our final example, I'm going to install single player commands. This mod is an example of a plugin that installs files and folders in a few different places as some mods might need you to do. I'm just going to show you this on Windows, but the process is pretty much the same on the Mac. So from our Minecraft client, click Options and open up our Resources folder again. In the bin folder, make sure to have a backup of Minecraft.jar, then open it up in 7-zip by right-clicking and then Open Archive. Delete the Meta INF folder, then following the instructions on the Single Player Commands webpage, drag and drop the COM folder into your Minecraft.jar, replacing the one that's already there, and then close the jar file window. Finally, drag and drop the remaining .class and .jar files from the single player commands folder into the bin folder, not into minecraft.jar, but into the same folder as that file. Close everything down, open up Minecraft, and if you get to the main menu, you did good. So this is just an example of two standard plugins and how the install instructions can vary. Uh, there definitely are more complicated ones than these, but the process generally won't get much harder than putting the right files in the right places. So that is my tutorial on how to install Minecraft plugins. If you have any questions, leave them below. Make sure to subscribe for more. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.